Hey everyone, welcome back to Curve the Row. Today we're diving into an exciting new tool that's going to level up the way you collaborate with ChatGPT. This is really useful for writing and coding projects. It's called Canvas and it just released. So what is Canvas? Think of it as your personal workspace with ChatGPT, but taken up a notch. Canvas is a separate interface where you can work on detailed projects like writing blogs, editing documents, or coding apps right alongside ChatGPT. It's perfect for tasks that go beyond just asking questions in the chat. So this new interface opens in a separate window and instead of chatting back and forth like we're used to, it allows you to directly interact with your project. You can highlight text, make edits, and get real-time suggestions from ChatGPT. It's like having a copy editor or code reviewer right there with you. So here's a little preview video that they added onto their website. So let's go ahead and try this out. And for this video, let's just try a, uh, a very simple HTML website. So at the top left, I just select chat GPT 4.0 with canvas. So I'll just, I'll simply just write at the bottom, create me a website and I'll go ahead and just enter this and let's see what it comes up with. So it's going to ask me for the purpose, the content design preference and so on. So let me go ahead and fill that up. I'm just going to write this website will be used to show off a game I'm working on called sirloin. And then I said, I want to have a homepage about me section, projects, contacts, so on. I want the con I want the website to be cutesy with Koi font. And I just want the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I don't want it to be made for Shopify, WordPress, and all that. And now it's actually, oh, wow. So now it's actually creating me a little sample of the HTML. So this is actually freaking awesome. So I can go ahead and hover over this code review button. Oh. It looks like I clicked it and it just automatically highlighted some stuff. I reviewed the code and left suggestions to improve the code. Oh, okay, nice. So consider separating the JavaScript functionality, blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and do that because it looks like it combined my... So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to click apply. I'm just going to apply whatever it tells me. And now it's going to go through each of the line and update it. And it looks like it added a script down here to validate the form. Consider separating the JavaScript functionality from HTML. So I do want to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So now it's going to go through again. And yeah, this is actually pretty cool. So I wonder if this can make me a separate file. So I want to separate my HTML and my CSS. So let's see if it can do that. So there's a way I can add comments, add logs, fix bugs and port to language. So let's see if I can port this to another language. Uh, oh, nice. So I can just scroll this up. So I can scroll this to Python, C++, PHP. JavaScript, TypeScript, and so on. It is a website, so I would prefer doing this in JavaScript, but let's try Python. Let's let's see uh, how it's going to move this to, to Python. Oh, wow. Okay, wow, this is actually freaking awesome. So it's going to import Flask. Okay, that's really good. Um, it's already telling me exactly what imports I need. So it recreated it as a Python Flask web application. Submission is now handled via Flask. So actually, I will port this back to JavaScript back properly. And then I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code and just run this out. And I like that if I close this, it'll show my previous iterations. So for example, over here, it has my HTML in it. And then down here, it looks like it got rid of my HTML. And this is actually not what I'm looking for. So I'm actually just going to cancel this and go back. So then now from here, I'm simply going to ask, um, can you separate my HTML file, my CSS file and JavaScript file? So I'm just wondering what it's going to do. To separate these, I think I'm going to only be able to edit one file at a time, but let's see if we can actually edit three files at a time. Nice. All right. So let me just put this into Visual Studios and run this. So I have simply just pasted the code chat GPT gave me, and now I'm just going to run this on live server. So I'm going to click go live and it did create a very base um, HTML template, but it's not actually, it didn't actually design anything, which I understand. It's not like it knows what images to add and so on. It just simply added the fonts and some headers, but I do think it is probably better for editing code rather than, um, rather than just doing it itself. And now let's try the writing purposes because this, because Canvas is supposed to be really good for coding and writing. So I'm just simply going to write, write me an SEO friendly blog about the top game engine in 2024. And now it prints it out in a separate overview and number one, Unreal Engine 5, of course, number two, Unity, number three, Godot or Godot, whatever you call it, number four, CryEngine, five, Amazon Lumberyard. So I'm a little surprised that it knows about Lumberyard slash O3DE. If you guys don't know, Amazon Lumberyard did shut down, but it is now O3DE. And yeah, that's pretty cool. It's the next open source that I thought would be popular uh, instead of Godot, but Godot is still a great engine. But O3DE is basically, um, I guess, 
the Unreal and the open source version of Unreal Engine. It is meant for AAA quality graphics and so on. But yeah, that's pretty cool that it has stuff like this on it. I think that's a, that's really awesome. But yeah, that's a brief overview of ChatGPT4 with Canvas. Thanks for watching Carter's Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And thanks for watching. Until next time.